Well, I'm excited to share with you this fresh revelation from the word that the Lord has given to me. And it's concerning those seasons in our lives where we sense a distance between us and the Lord. Now, there are times in your life where you will feel like God has distanced himself from you. But rest assured that is only a feeling the Holy Spirit abides with us. He does not leave us. Still, even though the Lord does not really leave us or distance himself from us, he still has a hiding nature. And I want to talk to you about the three reasons why God will hide. We're going to be talking about that on this edition of Spirit Church. But first, Stephen Moctezuma is here. He's going to lead you in some anointed worship. Worship with him and then we're going to get right back into this lesson. Here is Stephen Moctezuma. So I want to talk to you about the hiding nature of the Holy Spirit. I call him the hidden dove. And we're going to show you in the Song of Solomon where we find the Holy Spirit's hiding nature revealed. Now, first, I want to read a scripture to you so that you understand that all prayer, all seeking, all worship, everything that connects you and the Lord is birthed by the Holy Spirit. It's inspired. It's invoked by the Holy Spirit. The scripture says in Psalms, chapter number 27, verse number 8, My heart has heard you say, come and talk with me. And my heart responds, Lord, I am coming. So first, the Lord will call unto you, and then you are summoned into prayer. First comes the royal invitation. Every time you've had a desire to pray, it was an invitation from the Lord for all spiritual desires come from the Holy Spirit. So when you get a desire in your heart to seek the Lord, when you sense that gentle nudge of the Holy Spirit pressing you into the places of prayer, know that He is drawing you closer. The Holy Spirit has to invite you into the depths of God's presence before you can go. And you may say, well, there are times when I desire to be in God's presence. And I don't think the Holy Spirit has spoken to me. Well, the truth is that that desire itself is the Holy Spirit drawing you. For without him, we have no desires that are spiritual whatsoever. Now, looking to the Song of Solomon, I found the person of the Holy Spirit in the Song of Solomon 
and he's represented symbolically. Now, in the Song of Solomon, there is a conversation between two lovers, a man and a woman. And the young man represents Christ, and the young woman represents the church. It is a prophetic parallel for Christ and the church. So the Holy Spirit actually appears a few times in the Song of Solomon. First of all, in Song of Solomon chapter 8, verses 6 and 7, the scripture says, Place me like a seal over your heart, like a seal on your arm. For love is as strong as death, its jealousy as enduring as the grave. Love flashes like fire, the brightest kind of flame. Many waters cannot quench love, nor can rivers drown it. The Holy Spirit here is the unquenchable fire of God's love. Fire is a symbol of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is also found in Song of Solomon, chapter 4, verse number 16, where the scripture says, Awake, north wind, rise up, south wind. Blow on my garden and spread its fragrance all around. Come into your garden, my love, taste its finest fruits. The Holy Spirit is also represented in Scripture by wind. And here, the Holy Spirit is the alluring wind that spreads around the fragrance that brings together two who love each other. And to my point here on this lesson, the Holy Spirit is also found in the Song of Solomon, chapter 2, verse number 14. Remember, the young man represents Christ and the young woman represents the church. The young man tells the young woman in Song of Solomon, chapter 2, verse 14, My dove is hiding behind the rocks, behind an outcrop on the cliff. Let me see your face, let me hear your voice, for your voice is pleasant and your face is lovely. Now, he is saying that the dove is hiding and he uses this language to try to draw the young woman to come and seek after him. Notice here that the young man who represents Christ has a longing to be with the young woman which represents the church or you. He says this, let's read it again. Let me see your face. Let me hear your voice. For your voice is pleasant and your face is lovely. Now we often use this kind of language in worship songs to express our adoration of the Lord. But did you know that the Lord desires to be in your presence just as you desire to be in His? And again, the communication here, the language being used here, is the dove in the rocks. Christ is saying that He is giving the Holy Spirit to the church. It means that the Holy Spirit also, it also means that the Holy Spirit has a hiding nature. In fact, other scriptures point to this hiding nature of the dove, which is a symbol of the Holy Spirit. Jeremiah chapter 48, verse 28 says, You people of Moab, flee from your towns and live in the caves. Hide like doves that nest in the clefts of the rocks. So here we see again that doves have a hiding nature. In fact, in the book of Psalms, the Israelites were said to have found treasures in plunder. Among the treasures, they found doves. So Psalms chapter 68, verse 13 says, even those who lived among the sheepfolds found treasures, doves with wings of silver and feathers of gold. So treasure is something that is found here. Again, we see that the dove has a hidden nature, a hiding nature. Now, the Holy Spirit never leaves you. Let me make that very clear. But he does hide. And what I mean by that is though he abides near you, sometimes he makes that unapparent. Sometimes he makes it seem as though he is not near. And he does this for three reasons. But before I give you those three reasons, let me give you one more verse to demonstrate that God does have a hiding nature. Isaiah chapter 45 verse 15 says, Verily thou art a God that hidest thyself, O God of Israel, the Savior. So why does he hide himself? Number one, he hides himself to draw you. Simply put, he hides because he wants to be sought. So he'll hide to draw you. Jeremiah chapter 29 verse 13 says, And ye shall seek me and find me, when ye shall search for me with all your heart. Now he doesn't hide you to hurt you or to tease you or to cause you to be anguished. He hides you to draw you. He hides you to bring you deeper. When the Holy Spirit hides, he is not leaving you, he is leading you. The Holy Spirit is calling you into deeper waters. When the Holy Spirit hides, your desperation and your hunger begin to intensify. 
and something deep within you says, I have to search for the Lord. When you sense a distance between you and his presence, and again, it is only a sense, you are driven to seek him with passion. You are driven to seek him with fervor. Even as I am talking now, within you, there is an intensification, a desire to seek the Lord. And that's what happens when you talk about his hiding nature. So number one, he hides so he can draw you. Number two, the Holy Spirit hides to test you. Second Chronicles chapter 32, verse number 31 says, However, when ambassadors arrived from Babylon to ask about the remarkable events that had taken place in the land, God withdrew from Hezekiah in order to test him and to see what was really in his heart. Psalm chapter 14, verse number 2 says, The Lord looks down from heaven on the entire human race. He looks to see if anyone is truly wise, if anyone seeks God. In those seasons where you feel the distance between you and the Lord, where you feel like there is a gap between you and the heavenly, where you sense as though you cannot hear God, where you don't feel that abiding warmth of His presence, in those seasons where you cannot see God at work, the Lord is watching you. He wants to see how you'll respond. Now, some believers, what they do in these seasons is they grow angry with God. They, they stop seeking God. They stop praying. They stop reading the Word. They stop worshiping. They stop committing their lives because they base their lives on feelings rather than on faith. And here is the merciful uh, aspect of God's nature and action. If you start to distance yourself when the Lord hides His nature, when the Lord hides His presence, the Lord will come out of hiding and draw you back into where you need to be. But He's trying to teach you something. He's trying to test you. He's trying to get you to function on faith and not on feelings. He's trying to get you to operate on your trust in His Word and not on what you see in the natural. And so this is why He'll do it. He will do it to test you. He will hide to test you. And so here's how it works. God withdraws the sense of His presence. You feel this distance between you and the Lord, and then He watches you. He watches to see how you operate in that circumstance. Do you seek Him in prayer, or do you get angry with Him and distance yourself even more? Are you faithful to do the work of the ministry, or do you, because of lack of passion and emotions, cease to do the work of the ministry? He's watching. Now, if in that hiding season, you get a little bit off track, the Lord will come out of hiding and pull you back in. But He wants to mature you. He doesn't want to have to do those things for you. He wants you to learn to seek Him yourself. And so in those circumstances where you're asking, where is God at work in this? Or how do I see the Lord in this situation? In that place, that is where God is testing you and watching you. Pass that test. Seek Him despite what you feel and He will draw you even closer and trust you with greater riches of the spiritual. So number one, He hides to draw you. Number two, He hides to test you. And number three, the Holy Spirit hides to purify you. The scripture says in Hosea chapter 10, verse number 12, Sow to yourselves in righteousness, reap in mercy. Break up your fallow ground, for it is time to seek the Lord till He come and rain righteousness upon you. When you seek God, righteousness is rained down upon you. The Holy Spirit withdraws because it is in our seeking that we are purified. When we seek the Lord, we are being purified. We are being made holy. We are being processed. You see, God withdraws not just to withdraw, he withdraws so that we will seek Him. He withdraws so that He can test us. And it is in that testing, it is in that seeking that we are purified. This is why your flesh begins to squirm the moment you begin to pray. This is why your flesh begins to fight you the moment you begin to try to develop a prayer life. It knows that it's dying when you are praying and seeking the Lord. And in seeking God, you are shedding the flesh. In seeking God, you are refining the spiritual. In seeking God, 
you are being purified. So the process of seeking makes you one who can receive all that God has for you. So number one, God hides to draw you. Number two, the Holy Spirit hides to test you. And number three, the Holy Spirit hides to purify you. I want to pray with you now and ask the Lord that wherever you are in this season, that you would seek after Him. I'm going to pray that the fire of the Holy Spirit, that unquenchable fire of God's love, would stir within you a passionate pursuit of His presence. I want to pray that your, your heart and your spirit would be ignited, that there would be an inferno of love for God burning inside of you. So let's pray now that He would give you a hunger, a desire, and the discernment to seek Him. Father, in Jesus' name, I pray for that one receiving this prayer right now. And I ask you, Lord, that by your Spirit you will draw them, you will lead them, and you will show them, Father, the way into your glory, the way into the depths of your presence. I thank you, Holy Spirit, that you have a hiding nature. I thank you, Holy Spirit, that you allow us to seek you. And I pray now that hunger would be stirred, a fire would be ignited, and that seeking would begin. I hear the Lord saying, He wants me to tell you, it's time to ignite again the fire of your prayer life. It's time again to seek the face of God. Lord, help them do it. Remind us, Holy Spirit, when we get too busy and distracted. In your faithfulness, remind us to seek you. In the precious name of Jesus, we pray. And I want you to say it because you agree. Say, Amen. Well, that is it for the lesson. I want to welcome now the new members of Spirit Church. There you are up on the screen. We love you. We are praying for you. I always say that because I always mean it. And in fact, we are now at almost 3,000 members, 3,000 global members of Spirit Church. If you would like information on how you can join the Spirit family, use the information at the bottom of the screen. Sign up today. It's 100% free. You'll receive a fresh weekly teaching from me in your email inbox on Sunday mornings. And then you'll also be able to reply to that email for prayer support from our ministry staff. So join today, become a member. Again, it's free. And also you'll be joining a community of believers from all around the world. I want to read your comments now. And the comments are from last week's video, The Power of the Holy Spirit. And by the way, if you leave your comments here, I will read them on next week's video. Terry writes, I've been asking God for the gift of healing for quite a while now. As you began to pray, my hand began heating up. I'm so glad I watched this teaching and that he confirmed my gift in this way. Another commenter writes, Hi, I have just subscribed to your channel. I have been struggling in my life and finding it hard to find my way. I was raised in a non-religious family that didn't pray. I wanted to find God and change my ways, and I found this video. It helped just by watching, but I know I have a long way to go. God bless you. Well, God bless you, and thank you for watching Spirit Church here on Encounter TV. I want to ask the Spirit family to pray that they would find the Lord in ways they never thought they could find Him, that the Holy Spirit would draw them closer to Jesus than they ever imagined possible. Another commenter writes, My ear pain was cured. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Pastor David. Exactly the left ear like you said it. May God bless you. Well, she's referring, I believe, to a word of knowledge I gave on last week's video. And that's the wonderful thing about our channel is we like to just let the Holy Spirit move. This is His channel. The Holy Spirit is free to do whatever He wants to do. So often, words of knowledge will flow, miracles, the healing power of God, and the presence of the Holy Spirit. Those are the things that make this channel unique. Mena writes, definitely Stephen's best, awesome worship. And if you haven't seen that video, I agree. It's definitely, I'll say definitely one of his best. You have to go check out Stephen Moctezuma's worship playlist. 
my absolute favorite worship leader, which is one of the reasons why he's featured on this channel. But go take a look at last week's video, listen to that worship, and let it just, I want you just to get into worship and let the presence of the Holy Spirit touch you. Karen Grace writes, Thank you, Brother David, for the encouragement in this teaching. I feel the power of the Holy Spirit as you preach this lesson. Indeed, apart from God, we are nothing. More power to your ministry. God bless. Well, thank you for writing into us, Karen. I'm glad to know that the ministry is blessing you. And really, this is in my heart. I love to see people's lives touched and transformed and affected by the power of the Holy Spirit. Now, I have some really exciting news. For those of you who have been following our campaign to reach a thousand new $30 a month partners, we are now less than 100 partners away from reaching our goal. Can you imagine that? Look, take a look at where we are as of this week. This is where we stand in our campaign. Now, when we started a few months ago, we needed a thousand partners. Now, when I say partner, I'm not talking about a one-time donor. We appreciate one-time gifts and they definitely help. But the partnerships really help us to structure the ministry and plan for the future, thus making our planning and our resources more effective in what we do. So here's what we need. We needed a thousand new $30 a month supporters, and now we need less than a hundred. Here's what we're gonna do with that support. I always tell you, the reason we are doing ministry is to win souls. That's our why, okay? And I think you know that by now that my heart is just souls, but I'll keep saying it because I want you to never forget it. It's about souls. We need to win souls. Now, here's what we're gonna do with that support. Our ministry likes to keep things really simple because I believe in order to become dynamic, you must first become specific. And simplicity allows you to do a few things with excellence rather than many things with mediocrity. So we are going to, with that support, do more events. And that's key. We want to do more events in more places more often, more miracle services like you've seen here on the Presence and Power playlist on our channel. And then we also are going to be moving into our new ministry facility. And the monthly partnership, it really helps to cover the monthly cost of that new facility. You know, there's rent, there is utilities, there's security, there's maintenance, there's cleaning. There are many things, insurance, there are many things that come with moving into a new property. So the monthly support helps us to take care of those things. But here's what we're gonna do with that facility. We're gonna broadcast more often and in higher quality. We're going to build a section where you can come in as a studio audience and sit in on the tapings. We're gonna hold weekly services. We'll call them, I don't know, a school of ministry or Bible training or something, but it's about impartation. You'll get to come, Stephen will be doing worship, I'll be teaching the word, but we'll see you in person. We're also gonna be able to live broadcast from studio. We're also gonna be able to house the new TV network that we're building that's internet-based. There are so many things we're going to be able to do with this new facility. But bottom line, we want to win souls through events and media. And your monthly support helps us do that on larger scales than ever before. Look it, you can see it. I can see it. My ministry team can see it. Even the critics can see it. We are on the verge of a massive, massive expansion. And so I want you to be a part of this. Mark my words. I'll say it again and again and again. You're going to see a day where you and I together are filling stadiums. And what does that mean? It means thousands of people coming to know Jesus. And you're going to see that with your own eyes. And you'll be able to say, I was there at the beginning. So help us today. Sign up to become a $30 a month supporter. Do that now. If everybody who watches this video signs up, whether you're watching from the Philippines or South Africa or Nigeria, or you're watching from the UK or Canada or Singapore, wherever you're watching this from, you can sign up to become a supporter. And if you become a supporter today, I will send you a copy of either Carriers of the Glory or 25 Truths About Demons and Spiritual Warfare. For becoming a $30 a month supporter or more, I'll send you one of those. I'll sign it. It'll be my gift to you, an initiation gift to say thank you. So do that today. Help us take the gospel all around the world like never before. If you're watching this on YouTube, wait until the very end of this video. A red button is going to appear that you're going to be able to click. If you're watching this in the app, wait for the video to finish. When the video goes away, you'll see a button that says Partner with David. If you're watching this anywhere else, use the information at the bottom of the screen. Sign up today, become a monthly supporter. Help us take this gospel all around 
the world. Sign up today. Well, that is it for this edition of Spirit Church. Until next time, remember, nothing is impossible with God. Thank you for watching Encounter TV. Don't forget to subscribe. Also, help me win souls by spreading the gospel through events and media. Make a one-time donation or become a monthly supporter by clicking on the donate link now.